Hi, I'm Jesper from the Payroll Support Team here in New Zealand. At NYB, we come to work every day to simplify payroll in order to help businesses succeed. Today, we're going to cover off some of the most common things that our clients call us about at this time of year. These are the difference between holiday pay and annual leave, how to pay leave taken in advance, how to treat worked and unworked public holidays and days in lieu, and the different types of bonuses and how they're taxed. Let's start with holiday pay. Holiday pay is the leave entitlement that employees accrue as they work. This is usually 8% of their gross pay. If you're a casual worker, this 8% is usually paid out as you go each pay, so it doesn't accumulate. Permanent or fixed term staff, whether part-time or full-time, build this up throughout the year and it's held in a dollar value. After 12 months of continuous employment, these staff become entitled to their annual leave and their holiday pay accrual resets to zero. Annual leave is the entitlement you draw from when you take time off. Employees are entitled to four weeks of annual leave each year. So for example, if your employee works 40 hours each week, they're entitled to 160 hours a year. Remember, annual leave is held in time, hours, days or weeks, rather than a dollar value. As these staff continue to work after their anniversary date, their holiday pay accrual continues and the process repeats. So their holiday pay accumulated throughout the year will roll into annual leave at their next anniversary date. When it comes to paying annual leave, the most common questions are about the rate annual leave is paid at. A lot of people think that when you take annual leave, it's paid at your ordinary hourly or daily rate. Actually, you pay out the higher of either their ordinary weekly pay or their average weekly earnings. Ordinary pay is the amount that your employee usually gets in their pay each week. If they work the same hours each week, this one is nice and easy. When an employee's ordinary pay isn't so cut and dry, you can take the last four weeks and divide them by four. You'd most commonly use this method to calculate ordinary weekly pay for someone working variable hours. Average weekly earnings is, simply put, a weekly average of the last year's pay. You get this figure by dividing the last 52 weeks worth of earnings and dividing this figure by 52. So once you've worked out each of these rates, it's really important that you compare and pay out at the higher of the two. Sometimes you may want to let an employee take leave before they're entitled to it. This is called leave in advance. This most commonly happens in their first 12 months of employment before they have a leave balance. When an employee takes leave in advance, they usually go into a negative balance. This negative balance is deducted from the four weeks of leave the employee becomes entitled to at their anniversary date. It's a good idea to set out how much leave can be taken in advance in your employment agreement. It's also a good idea to have your employee agree in writing that any overpayment of annual leave can be deducted from their final pay if they have a negative leave balance when they leave. Without this clause, you usually can't deduct the amount of negative leave from a final pay if an employee leaves. The way that the annual leave rate is calculated and the way annual leave is paid out is the same as normal. You pay out the greater of either ordinary weekly earnings or average weekly earnings. If you don't have a full 52 weeks of earnings to calculate the average on, use the number of weeks from the employee's start date until the end of the last pay period. Next up is public holidays. Firstly, if an employee works on a public holiday, they're entitled to time and a half for the hours they work. If this is their normal day of work, they're also entitled to an alternate holiday, or day in lieu, to take at a later date. If an employee takes a public holiday off that they would normally have worked, they're entitled to be paid for that day, just as if they'd worked it. If they have a usual work pattern for that day, you pay the same value you would if they had worked a normal day. This is called relevant daily pay. Relevant daily pay also includes things like overtime or bonuses if they're usually paid on that day. While relevant daily pay is a good place to start, if working out relevant daily pay isn't possible or practical, for example, if you have a shift worker who works different hours and days per week, you can use average daily pay. This is the full year's earnings divided by the number of full or part days that the employee worked over the year. Note that these two calculations also apply when you're paying out alternate holidays, sick leave and bereavement leave. Unlike sick leave or annual leave, there's no entitlement period with public holidays. What we've talked about applies as soon as someone comes to work for you. There are two main types of bonuses. Regular bonuses are those that are paid periodically. Common examples of these are performance bonuses, incentives and overtime. The other kind of common bonus is a one-off bonus. 
These are generally bonuses paid annually or under special conditions, and are treated as lump sum payments. Both of these bonuses have Holiday and KiwiSaver calculated against them. The main difference between them is how they're taxed and how they affect annual leave rate calculations. Regular bonuses are easy. They're taxed normally for the period they're paid out in. The amount of the bonus is then included in both ordinary and average leave calculations. One-off bonuses work slightly differently. They're taxed as lump sum payments and have their own tax calculation. One-off bonuses only affect average leave calculations. To work out the PAYE tax on a one-off bonus, take the last four weeks of gross earnings for the employee and multiply by 13. This gives you what's called grossed up annual income. Add the amount of the one-off bonus to this and tax it at the appropriate rate. These rates are available on the IID website. If you're using MYB payroll software, your product can help you to work this out. To find out how to manage leave in your MYB software, check out our other videos on this website or get in touch with us in the support team. We're here to help.